this sounds like a long lost Beatles track, it's no accident. In Halifax, Nova Scotia, math professor Jason Brown has loved the Beatles nearly as long as he's loved math. And now, he's fused his two passions. He believes he's figured out the math behind the best of Beatles pop that makes a band song sound fresh even generations later. How does math play into it? Well, both music and mathematics ultimately depend on patterns. And mathematics is the systematic study of patterns. So the feeling that I have is that if in a piece of music it sounds fresh after repeated listenings and it sounds so right, then there is likely some mathematics underlying uh, the beauty of the song. Jason says the best songs often incorporate mathematical tricks. After analyzing the Beatles, the professor borrowed some of their math principles and used it in his song, A Million Wise. What he came up with was a very Beatles-esque song of his own. But it's not just Beatles by numbers he's after. For Jason, math is more than just formulas. It's a way of looking at the world, a search for patterns. Here's some of what he's found. In Long Tall Sally, a Little Richard song the Beatles covered often, faster chord changes create a sense of excitement in the listener. Jason says that's achieved when the duration of a chord is halved and then halved again. When Jason listens to Here Comes the Sun, he sees synchronized arithmetic patterns. To him, playing notes in sequences of three over a four-beat rhythm is a guitar pattern based on the least common multiple of the numbers three and four, the number 12. That little bit of mathematics, that simple mathematics of playing one grouping against another, uh, is so appealing. And whether they knew it or not, the Fab Four took on a mathematical approach when they wrote I Want to Hold Your Hand. Here's a problem that illustrates how the Beatles challenged a hidden assumption, a technique mathematicians use when problem solving. Let's say you were asked to connect all nine of these dots using only four straight lines. You'd likely end up with five lines because you're assuming you're limited to the boundaries of the dots. But once you challenge that assumption, then four lines is enough. Jason says the Beatles showed that they were thinking outside of the box when instead of starting a song on beat one, they started the song three eighth notes earlier. And so that whole opening completely hides where beat one is. And so I think that makes that opening so interesting. And it makes you want to listen to it over and over again. It makes it sound fresh. And although Jason's mathematical analysis might strike the wrong chord with artists who find his methods too calculating, he says it motivates him to be even more creative. The more you're aware of, uh, the better choices you can make. That's what looking at music mathematically allows me to do. It allows me to look at these, some of the assumptions that I make and other people make and deliberately try to break them. Hopefully, you break them in a musical way that, uh, that might be memorable and might be something that will really be, uh, make some good music. For the Wall Street Journal Digital Network, this is Christina Jang.